Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Viakt, and I welcome you all to a new episode of Topic of the Week. And this time, we're gonna talk about the recent events with censorship on Twitter and Reddit. I'm going to start with Reddit, however, since it's the biggest issue at the moment. So I'm just gonna walk you guys through each and every part about Reddit, which will be the new harassing rules, the angry rants, fat people hate, and Ellen Poe. So I sure hope that you guys have taken your seats and that you're all comfy and all that, because this is going to become one hell of a ride. So let's get the show on the road, shall we? Well, let's start with Ellen Pau, as Pau is the center of things regarding censorship and having subreddits being shut down on Reddit. But who is Ellen Pau, what does she want, and what has she done to Reddit up to this point? Well, first things first. Ellen Pau is the current CEO of Reddit, and she's also an American lawyer. Other than that, she's probably most well known for her discrimination case against venture capital firm Kleiner Perkins. A case which Pau lost, by the way. Well, there's no crime in that, right? Sure, but uh, here's the thing. When Ellen Pau took over as CEO for Reddit back in November 2014, a new age of censorship was brought into the world of Reddit, which would include having subreddits and people banned from Reddit. And that, of course... Well, sucks. And that's probably why many Reddit users even compare Ellen Pao to Mao Zedong and Kim Jong-un. So now I understand why the Reddit community missed the former Reddit CEO, Yishan Wong. And that would of course explain why the whole Reddit front page was full of rants and parodies of Ellen Pao this morning. I mean, just take a look at some of these pictures which I have, well, taken the liberty to collect for you guys. You got the first one here. I think this was taken, well, early this morning, I think. Anyhow, it speaks for itself, really. You got all the parody photos and parody headlines going strong here. I'm not gonna read the harsh language, but <laughs> you are free to read it for yourself out loud if you want to. And this is the second picture here. And it's worth uh, mentioning that the top three... Uh, subreddits here are actually, well, it's a hat trick. It's uh, like <laughs> duplicated pretty much. It's the Ellen Pau. If you vote this up, it will show up on Google Images when, you know, people Google search Ellen Pau. And uh, it's the <laughs> Nazi crosses, the Nazi flag, just to make it even more like uh, <laughs> fun kind of thing, I guess. They're just making fun out of Ellen Pau. And once again, this is like. The perfect example of, you know, what happens when you fuck with the community, you know, don't bite the hand that feeds. And this would be the perfect example of that since Reddit decided to use collective punishment and prohibition on its users on Reddit. Just take a look at this picture. This is what Reddit looked like before the new rules existed. And as you can see, the fat people hate content only existed inside the fat people hate subreddit. But once Reddit banned the fat people hate subreddit and launched their new harassing rules, the fat people hate content started to spread all over Reddit. Well, way to go Reddit and Ellen Pau. I bet that you feel really really smart right now, don't you? So who can blame the Reddit users for being upset and angry really, since Reddit has slowly started to become yet another digital backyard for the SEWs and its censorship supporters. So it's wake up time people, our way of life, our culture and our hobbies are under attack by the social justice warriors and radical feminists. In fact, it's been like that for years, however, the attacks are now more intense than ever before. As comics, video games, books, movies and TV series are now an everyday target for the SUWs and their agenda. And just think about this for a brief moment, if it's like this right now, then can you even imagine how the world and the internet will be like in, well, say 5-6 years from now, if we don't put down our foot at this very instant? Well, I think it's a pretty scary thought. And I also find this to be, well, pretty, you know, disgraceful to all the men and women that has fought to give it, you know, give us the ability to have freedom of speech, since this is the right opposite of that. I mean, it's pure censorship and dictatorship, really. And truth to be told, ever since I started to write about Gamergate in August last year, I have seen how the Tumblr's cancer has started to spread like the plague all over the world. 
And if you don't know what Tumblrism is, then I would recommend you to read through Kiwi Farm's Beginner's Guide to Tumblrisms. And that guide will give you a complete insight of what Tumblrisms is all about. You will also start to understand the mindset of Tumblrism. So, happy reading! I will also add that uh, link to the video description box. And here's the funny part about Reddit and Ellen Powell's decision to remove the harassing subreddits from Reddit. Because they choose to ban the fat people hate subreddit, but Reddit didn't even bother about threads such as cute girl corpses. I mean, how is that even humanly possible? It's not even like a logical decision in any kind of way. It's just messed up beyond belief. And just so you know, when Reddit banned fat people hate, they banned over 150,000 people as well, because that was the amount of subscribers that the fat people hate subreddit had before Reddit decided to close it down. And that of course created a lot of upset and angry people all over the world, as you might imagine. Even Boogie2988 made a video about it just recently. And if you know Boogie like I do, then you know that he's a big guy. No offense meant, but he's, you know, overweight. So it was extra interesting to hear what Boogie had to tell, you know, his thoughts and all about the fat people hate ban. A ban which he didn't like or approve of, even though he didn't like the actual content on the subreddit. And why is that? Because uh, Boogie think it's censorship, like pretty much anyone else, including me. And guess who else that spoke up about this uh, matter? Well, no one less than Mr. Marcus Notch Passion himself. And this is what Mr. Notch said on Twitter yesterday. I'm overweight and was frequently offended by FPH on Reddit. So I blocked it. Uh, it being banned is ridiculous. And I have to say that, once again, I agree with Mr. Notch here. And I can actually relate to this as... Uh, I was pretty goddamn overweight back in time. Actually, I was almost uh, 130 kilo heavy back in 2001. And even though that, I still don't want to see any, you know, censorship or ban of the fat people hate subreddit. Sure, I'm not fat anymore. I'm like 75 kilo heavy now, but you get the idea. That was some positive news for sure, but sadly enough it's just about to get far worse however, as Ellen Powell has started to delete Reddit subs that mention her. I heard about this thanks to a tweet by Honey Bandit Shannon, which would be this tweet right here. So in other words, I won't even be able to post this video on Reddit, well, since I mentioned both Powell and Reddit in this video, because then I would probably get, I don't know, banned or the... Subreddit will get banned, what do I know? So I guess this is just like one of the many reasons behind why there's even a revolt at Reddit right now. And I think this tweet explains the current situation with Reddit and its revolt pretty good in my opinion. So please allow me to read B and Cake's tweet for you. So here we go. Same thing happened to 4chan where the SUW took over and started banning people and topics that showed them in a bad light. And it drove an exodus to competitor 8chan, where the Gamergate movement lives on. These left thoughts just don't get it. The age of old media censorship is over. Your tactic of just infiltrating positions of power to push your agenda and drive others out is over. The internet is not like some cable network or newspaper editorial board where the fellow travelers can just infest the board and turn it into an agate prop mill. On the internet there are literally an infinite number of possible alternatives and people will simply move around your censorship. And I think that this tweet will summarize the whole thing up pretty good in my opinion. The SUE simply cannot win as the internet is free. Well, at least for now. So screw your censorship and long live freedom of speech. So I was not all that surprised to hear that there's an ongoing petition for Ellen Powell's resignation on change.org. And that petition just happens to be the background picture which you're looking at right now. Anyhow, I think it's safe to say that there's quite a few people out there that wants, you know, Ellen Powell to step down as the CEO of Reddit Inc. However, I don't think that Powell will bother, you know, all that much about this petition though. Not even if it gets like 100k or 1 million signs, since uh, Powell doesn't seem to be the kind of person that cares, you know, what her users thinks and wants. At least that's what I think.
And that's where the alternatives to Reedit comes into the picture. Sites such as Vote.com, for example. Fun fact, the Vote site actually crashed yesterday because it had too much traffic. And I bet that most of its traffic came from ex-Reddit users. I even remember that I saw some pictures over a traffic report for Vote.com and Reddit the other day on Twitter. And it seems like there's a lot of people leaving Reddit for Vote.com. And who can blame them for it really? At least I can't, <laughs> because I'm one of them. Now ask yourself the following question. What does Reddit mean by harassment and how exactly can they define it? And where does the line go between harassing someone and just being critical about something? Don't get me wrong here, I don't support hate, threats or harassment of any kind or sort. But I think that the Reddit rules are somewhat unclear, to be honest. So I find it to be rather odd that the fat people hate subreddit got banned for violating the Reddit rule of keeping everyone safe, while there's still subreddits that show pictures of dead children. I mean, don't you find this to be really strange and all messed up? And from what I have heard, it's Reddit CEO Ellen Powell that's been pushing the agenda of turning Reddit into a safe place, so to speak, where all the users will never feel attacked. Well, don't get me wrong, I don't like trolls, haters or, you know, racism or crap like that, and of course it should be dealt with, but uh, Reddit has gone way beyond that point now. It pretty much is enough that you hold the wrong opinions about something or speak up about something which you shouldn't speak up about, or if you even dare to write something about Reddit CEO Ellen Pau, which most likely will result in a, you know, ban. So I think it's safe to say that things has gone out of hands at Reddit, and now Reddit is heading towards its own doom, so to speak. I also have to mention one more thing that's really messed up in the case with Reddit, because the American news site The Guardian quoted Sarah Nyberg in their article about the Reddit revolt the other day. And they did it in such a way that it made it sound like Sarah is the voice of reason. And now you might ask yourself the following question. Who the hell is Sarah Nyberg aka Sarah Butts? Well, she's a whole separate story for sure, but uh, just google her name, Sarah Nyberg or Sarah Butts, and you will find everything you need to know about her. I can give you this much, however. Sarah hates free speech, she's also said to have done quite a lot of crazy things, and she's an anti-Gamergate supporter. So happy reading folks, just knock yourselves the fuck out. Now it's time for the part that concerns Twitter's new future for sharing lists over blocker accounts on Twitter, and this is what Twitter tweeted out yesterday. Starting today we're rolling out a change to make sharing lists of blocker accounts easy. Sharing block lists helps to make Twitter safer. Then Twitter went on saying, you can now import lists of accounts that other Twitter users block and export and share your own block list. And this is of course somewhat alarming, considering the fact that the blockbot and Gigi Autoblocker is still active on Twitter. Both of them are also known as the Gamergate industry blacklists. Anyhow, this means that Twitter will be heading down the same road as Reddit has already taken. And trust me, this is just the beginning. So do I think it's a coincidence that both Twitter and Reddit roll out these changes to make their sites and services safer for us, you know, its users? Hell no, I don't think so. And why is that? Because these changes seem to have been coordinated. And I keep hearing the same mantra over and over again. Let's just say that I don't buy the keeping everyone safe and to make Twitter and Reddit safer talk. So how is Twitter's list of blocked accounts and Reddit's new harassing rules relevant to Gamergate? Well, call me paranoid or a conspiracy lunatic, but Twitter and Reddit's new futures will make it really easy to silence people that wants to speak up about sensitive matters. Just take the case with Kataku in action on Reddit for example. It's probably just a matter of time now before Reddit closes down Kataku in action for good. Well, for obvious reasons, since it's pretty much the, you know, headquarters of Gamergate on Reddit. So in a way, all of this is rather ironical, because these precautions by Twitter and Reddit were most likely made to make it harder for Gamergate and its supporters to operate on the web. But what has happened instead is that people have started to realize that Gamergate has been right all along, as they have seen censorship up close and personal on both Reddit and Twitter, and that's why Gamergate matters. 
This is not the end of the censorship war, this is just the beginning. And this was everything that I had to say on this matter, so I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. With that said, thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like and comment on this video. So take care people, adios. Well thank you very much for watching our video ladies and gentlemen, tons of love to ya. Now don't you forget to click that nice subscribe button up here so that you don't miss out on any of our new videos. And if you want to support our videos then show us some love on Patreon. Speaking of videos, in video number one I talk about how Gamergate has changed the games industry, in video number two I talk about American McGee and his death threats, and in video number three I talk about how Kataku and Polygon lied about the ukulele kickstarter campaign. So with that said, take care people, adios.